So I had quite a lot of questions about how the cryogenic volcano works. The, the quick way to empty it is you just block up that guy there. <laughs> it's really quite effective. Um, yeah, that's just awesome. Uh, so this is, of course, the uh, way that they would have got their gas out of their tanks on the Apollo thing. And so what you're going to have is the liquid nitrogen in the bottom of there. Then you have one tube that goes all the way to the bottom. And you have a second tube, which will just sort of um, give you a bit of a vent. Or maybe for a simpler analogy, this is just your standard sort of uh, thing for watering plants. Uh, it's got a valve on the outside here. So that valve on the outside, when it's open, is essentially what that tube there does, the little stubby one on the side. So all the time that this is open, this represents the boiling of the liquid nitrogen, right? Pardon me, it's going continuously, the boiling of the liquid nitrogen. So all the time this tube is uh, open, there is no way you can actually build up the pressure. However, when I put my finger over the, the end, which is effectively this the equivalent of blocking that up, then all of a sudden it builds up a little bit of pressure in... I would do if... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that little bit of pressure will quite happily blow the liquid out. The end difference, of course, being that the liquid is cryogenic, so when it first comes up into contact with all this stuff, which is 100 degrees above its boiling point, um, it uh, it boils. The, the quicker way to empty it is you just block up that guy there. <laughs> it's really quite effective. Um, yeah. That's just awesome. You might also recall that I tried to suck the liquid nitrogen out using a vacuum pump. There's no way pressure can actually sensibly build up in here because I've got, you know, two, two vents to the outside. And the reason I wanted to do it this way, of course, is I want to show that there's no real way you can sensibly suck out the liquid nitrogen. So if I just start a pump on it from this and try and suck the liquid nitrogen out, you'll see it, well, you won't, probably won't be able to see it from there, but it does sort of suck it up, but not in any real convincing fashion, right? Because if you sort of suck it up, it instantly boils in the tube. So I think, fine. Yeah, let's take a look at this with the high-speed camera at uh, 20,000 frames per second, which is complete overkill for this. Uh, but the thing that makes it kind of interesting is the glass tube here, of course, is at room temperature. And this is the glass tube you're sucking the liquid nitrogen up into, or blowing it up into in this case. And the thing that makes that a little bit interesting is the tube here is about 200 degrees hotter than the boiling point of the liquid nitrogen. So in this case, this is the one where it's all under vacuum. Vacuum is a bowl way of putting it because, you know, you put a vacuum on liquid nitrogen, it evaporates into that vacuum pretty bloody quickly. But anyway... We are sucking on this, and that's why stuff is going up. Although it's, it's a kind of curious way of going up, because actually some of this is, is awesome. Um, yeah, surface tension is king on these sort of length scales. But it also looks kind of funny. And the reason it looks kind of funny is because um, liquid nitrogen has a much lower surface tension than water. Um, it's also quite kind of fun that oh yeah the entire gas flow here is because down at the bottom um, which you can't quite see here there'll be boiling liquid nitrogen and that's actually producing a jet of gas and that jet of gas is carrying a little bit of sprayed liquid nitrogen up like this and yeah it, it, it's a bit of fun but you know you want one thing you'll notice is all the particles go at different speeds um, there's actually some kind of fun bits later on where you'll see that one particle actually sh shoots into another and it sort of explodes going upwards, which is, it, it's a bit of fun. Anyway, on this side, we've got what happens uh, when I put my finger over the gap. And so now you've got the boiling nitrogen on either side or evaporating, producing a vapor pressure that is forcing the liquid nitrogen up into the tube. And here you'll notice all the, all the particles are basically going at the same speed. And uh, at the moment, 
the whenever the liquid nitrogen comes into contact with the side, of course, it will also instantly boil and produce more gas, which sort of accelerates the the flow rate. And there's another thing that's um, uh, as as it um, touches the side, it cools it down, and as it cools it down you'll find that you get more liquid and less gas in here. At the moment, this is a very gassy sort of flow up here. Um, after about five or ten seconds like this, the outside of the tube will be uh, at about the same temperature as the liquid nitrogen, and it'll squirt out very much in the same way that the water squirted out of the thing for watering plants earlier. Um, I can actually I can change the speed of these these playbacks and but yeah I mean th th this one is very laminar uh, yeah beyond the fact that it is some tortuous um, stream of liquid nitrogen I mean the flow rate yeah the differential flow rates on these are oh look at this guy that's yeah so this one's kind of fun in that he is sort of the only thing that's uh, propelling him up here is the evaporation of nitrogen at the bottom. Which is kind of this one on steroids. Anyway, so cool. That's what it all looks like in slow motion. Now I'm going to show you how I filmed this. Let's bring it around here so you see the whole setup. Uh, you've got the high speed camera, obviously. The nitrogen guy, that's the one we were just playing with. These little torches, by the way, these are absolutely fantastic for the uh, high speed filming. Because they put out some absolutely crazy amount of light. They get incineratingly hot as well. Um, uh, but uh, I, I do have some other sort of continuous light sources. But it turns out these things, oh, yeah, they're pretty good. And I was only using one of them. If I, if, I didn't really want to go that high in frame rate today. But you get two of those on something and yeah. Uh, you do have to be a bit careful putting too much light on these things because you are focusing it on the sensor here. And even though the majority of this camera here is just a giant heat sink, you can actually burn your sensors if you get too, too carried away with stuff. Um, and yeah, so there it is, all being saved onto the hard drive. Kill. Cool. So that's the sort of thing that goes into a little bit of high speed filming. Need one more. Well, we're done the suction thing. A bit of condensation off this point. In the meantime, bring this back to life. <clears throat> Let's see what that looks like. 
Oh, that's kind of trippy. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome liquid nitrogen. Oh, that's awesome. You can see the big bits being peppered by the little bits. Oh, this is actually fascinating. This is like watching it all in zero G or anti-zero G. The little ones go at the gas flow and the big ones. Oh, that's a nice bit of bumping. And at that, we're done. <sighs> Boom.